All right, Aichi. You know all the rules. You know how to play the game. You're all set. Uh, just one more question, Kai. I think we forgot something. What? Uh, what's stride? Huh? You know, stride. You have, like, a bunch of cards in the corner, and you discard grade threes, and there's something called generation break. I heard that was pretty big in Vanguard. Let, let, let's not, let's not talk about that. But it was, like, a huge deal. Like, three years the game got completely absorbed. Let's, let's, like, there was all these things like G-guards, and, like, everything was generation break, and let's, let's, uh, let, let, let's just pretend that never happened. But when pretending it never happened, be like acknowledging it was a complete disaster. You know what, kids, you want me to justify why you got that girly voice? No, 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 moving on. So this week, we learned how to play Vanguard, which I assume everyone already did, but Aichi learned how to play Vanguard in basically the same way he did before. But I still really liked this. Uh, this was a very fun tutorial episode. I liked the way everyone sort of stayed involved. Like, I like that everyone had a moment where they explained a rule. Everyone got to say what was going on. It wasn't like last time where everything was sort of stagnant. People just added side commentary. Everyone kind of got to do something, which is always very important when you have a lot of people in a scene. On top of that, I thought the game itself was a lot of fun because Kai felt more aggressive. In the original Vanguard, because obviously no one knew what this was, they had to simplify everything. But here, since it's an established franchise, you get to maybe put a little more juice in it. There's obviously explaining how writing works, calling, triggers, all that stuff. But they kind of do it a little bit more excitingly. I like that we got to see a grade 3 with Twin Drive right off the bat. I like that Redraw played a role in this because when you think about it, Aichi did not have a good opening hand, and that kind of screws him later because he didn't know put all the zeros back, try and get to your uh, ones and twos and threes. That was kind of a neat thing. Like, it makes it feel like it's a more come from behind victory. Like, I remember when he missed the ride and Kai pointed that out. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> That's actually a very big thing in the game of Vanguard, and it did put Aichi in a very bad position. One that he needed to top deck his way out of, and technically did cost him the game. Remember, he did hit 6 damage. He 6 damage healed, but let's be real here. There is nothing more salty in Vanguard when you push through to 6 damage, and it's like, nope, healed. Miracle Heal. Everything was fine. I did nothing to actually save myself, just the way the cards arranged themselves. And funny thing about that last point, the episode actually addresses that. That is actually sort of the main thing of the episode. Remember in last week, I said the main point of the episode, the main thing that really sets everything to motion is Aichi making the decision to get up and stand up for himself. A very similar thing happens this week, and it happens when the sixth damage heal happens. At the end of the second episode of the original series, when he six damage healed, that was the biggest part of the thing. Aichi lived. He is able to now fight back. And don't get me wrong, that second episode is very good of the original. But this one is fundamentally different in that when he six damage heals, that's not really the exciting thing. That's not the turning point of the match. Now, some would say technically yes, because Aichi still got to stay in the game. But, but, the most important thing about this episode is Aichi remembering who Kai is and then choosing to have fun. First up, I like that, it, or at least this is how it looked to me, Aichi didn't fully remember who Kai was until Kai said the thing he said when he was a kid. That is important because it sort of gives Aichi a little more depth. In the original series, it is made very clear that Aichi's entire life, his childhood to young adolescence, was spent him building a vanguard deck so he could just meet one random person he met for five minutes. Saying that out loud, it's pretty damn stupid. <laughs> this way, by doing it like this, by showing that Aichi has lived a life, he hasn't just been waiting for a chance encounter, Vanguard was more of sort of an escape for him. It was an escape in the original series, but it was leading to a very specific goal. Here it sort of feels like, yeah, I'd like to play Kai again one day, I'd like to actually play him, but this is kind of a thing for me. It 
helps me, it makes me feel better. That is a very real thing. A lot of people who get into card games get into it because they have a lot of trouble socializing in school, they have maybe some home troubles. It's a great way for people to actually come out of their shells and meet people, and that is sort of the main focus here. And what makes that the most important aspect of the episode is that at that moment, once he six damage heals, once he decides to have fun, that might not have happened in the same order, I'm remembering it, and this was this morning and I had to work all day, but it all kind of fits in together. The minute he does that, he stops feeling sorry for himself. He stops being wimpy. He stops feeling overwhelmed, and he just decides to have fun. That feeling of why he has this deck, of why he's in this place, and why he's going through this weirdness is all put into context and that is the moment that matters because it's the moment he truly realizes he likes vanguard he likes standing up for himself and he likes putting himself in a new direction this all sounds maybe for a lot of people who aren't used to my mad ramblings that oh you're just inferring too much i don't think so I feel like that is meant to be that very important moment where Aichi's entire life turns around and that's when he gets Blaster Blade. That's when he truly can promote himself and become the next grade when he really is ready to feel it. When he's not the little Night Squire, when he's ready to start being that big knight and goes up against Kai accordingly. I like that it really did feel like Aichi had to win in that turn or else he was screwed and it did just come back to the luck of the trigger which shows that he still has a long way to go compared to Kai who is very powerful and I like that they sort of show off right the bat that Kai has some issues. Um, they did that last week too but this week was much more apparent <laughs> that this guy has some problems. I love the way Masaki looks at him the entire episode. It just felt like she's looking at him like what a weirdo. <laughs> That's what it kind of felt like to me. Um, other than that, everything was very fine. The cards talking to me is whatever. The new sort of mechanics, uh, imaginary gift is cool. Uh, there being no forerunners is kind of nice because it means that Saki combos don't start from the minute you write to grade one. So, yeah, I'm really invested and I really like this. I think it's really good. I like that they set up a lot of directions it can go in. And yeah, I really like that they're taking the time to craft the right story. Now, I also, it could also just be that since there were story beats they knew they had to hit and all returning viewers knew they had to hit, they felt like they could maybe do things a little bit differently and not focus on some stuff. But I'm choosing to believe all of this was done for artistic reasons. Um, I may get proven wrong later, but for that we'll have to see. So, yeah, what did you think about this episode? Do you like where it's going? Did you like the card fight? Do you like the new sort of card fight style? Showing uh, how numbers get made in this game, showing cards talking, the new shield value, stuff like that. I think the shield value should have been made during stride format, uh, honestly. But, yeah, tell me that below. And we're going to start doing Vanguard questions of the week as I do Yu-Gi-Oh! questions of the week. Um, first up, uh, just because I need to stall and start off with simple stuff before I come up with complex stuff, uh, the two trial decks, Royal Paladin and Kagero, which do you actually think is better, and do you think it's going to sort of maybe give those two decks unfair advantage as they'll have more cards when the actual Q4 set comes out? Honestly, Novas and Oracles are kind of looking a little bit better than Royals and Kageros. But tell me that below. And as always, click to like, click to subscribe, and please, next week when we introduce Kamoi, don't botch this. Please, Vanguard, I'm begging you, don't make me sit through three years of annoying bratty kid again.